Hello, my name is Gideon Harris, and I love CNC machines. I'm trying out a new style video here to maybe do a vlog style, which would make my life so much easier as far as editing and writing the script goes, and just kind of go with the flow, explain what I'm doing, try it out, have some live footage on that, and uh, see where that takes me. So one of the projects I worked on recently was a small pendant for a friend. And um, it was definitely a challenge to make. Um, I did it first in wax and it turned out pretty well. I got quite a bit of detail on it. Um, but when I did it in aluminum, I ran into a ton of issues. Um, and I'm doing all of this on the Pocket NC, which is a five axis desktop CNC machine. And it's not as powerful as a lot of the other brands as far as Tormach and house machines go. Uh, but it still does have quite a bit of power for a machine being smaller than a square foot. So some of the issues I ran into was a lot of, I had a lot of chatter when I was cutting the aluminum um, and a lot of chip building and I continually had to stop it, let the, let the aluminum cool down and then continue up again. I did this mostly with air coolant and um, I even tried using a freezer block of ice, um, which did not really work at all but any way I could to cool down the part as much as I could. I talked to other people, asking them their advice on where I could improve, and one of the people said that I had kind of a cascading uh, slew of issues, um, one of them being the work holding. Unfortunately, the Pocket NC low-profile vise that they have right now is difficult to work with bar stock, and so I had to use a piece of wax to brace it in place, which ended up cracking and there's a lot of weird things. I barely, I barely finished the part, which is kind of surprising that I even did it all. So the work holding wasn't the greatest, so there's vibrations from there. Uh, the tooling itself, I was using some older end mills that uh, probably weren't the sharpest and uh, that uh, caused a lot of chip welding. So. Um, I just got to improve those two main areas. Uh, somebody outside of the, that doesn't know that much about the pocket NC suggested that I use a coolant, like a, uh, he suggested vegetable oil, which is interesting. I haven't really heard that before, but like a mist coolant system, um, which would uh, help with the cooling of the part. So I was kind of looking into that, but uh, a lot of people are saying that that's not advised as the bed that it's uh, all the parts are made on. It has a lot of electronics inside of it, and somebody's done it before, and they've damaged them. So they do not advise working on doing it like that. So one of the ways I thought about improving the project overall is building a new vice system that would hold the bar stock with more tension. So as you can see here on the screen, this is the design I came up with. It re replaces the old system, which is just basic hard stop with a adjustable clamp that moves into it. So the new system here would be a, a disc that sets on the bed and then a, a hard stop backer with holes through it that I would use uh, steel nuts on the opposite side, then screw in through the bar stock to attach it and that should hypothetically work better than my old system. So I'm gonna be milling that out today. One of the downsides of this design is that I would have to drill out the holes in the bar stock itself, which is kind of a pain to do to get it accurate as far as that goes. So I picked up a drill press the other day, which should make things go much easier. And I'm thinking about making a uh, little template in which to make those holes fast and efficiently. So right now I'm about to set up the cam file for it and uh, send it up to the pocket and see. This is why I do a phasing operation. For moments like this, when I forget to set the tool length, and that could have gotten way worse. Thankfully, the previous tool was uh, much longer, so we're good. But man, that could have been bad. Uh, I gotta remember to do that. I gotta have like a checklist or something. 
Before setting up all my cam system, I always do a facing operation. One, to make sure that my stock is the actual height, what it should be. And two, to make sure that there's not some weird length hot offsets for the tooling. So it's always a pretty good practice. At least for, I found it's pretty good practice because I've nearly crashed some end mills if I didn't do that. But yeah, so I got the facing operation and then I got a 3D adaptive clearing, which I'm about to run. But first, I'm going to do the facing operation, see if it makes sure there's no issues whatsoever. Uh, then I'll program the rest of the toolpaths. After the facing operation, I did a 3D adaptive clearing of the top face. I didn't realize I had the stock not perfectly square in the clamp, so it kind of scared me a bit when it started out cutting deeper into the material than I intended. I didn't really see a need to fix it, as it would be really difficult and might throw something else off. So I decided to just leave it as is. I was still getting a bit of chatter from the tool, so I asked the machinist friend, and he suggested lowering the end mill farther into the collet, um, and have it only stick out pretty much just as far as you need to. So if you have a half inch hole that you need to mill out, then only have it reach out half an inch. It reduced the sound for sure, but it's, there was still quite a bit of chatter that I didn't really like. Uh, so he suggested using a paintbrush with a little bit of coconut oil, and then just dab the end mill um, every so often and that would help the cut significantly. I tried it and holy smokes did it make a difference. Um, you could barely hear any bad chatter and it sounded much much nicer. I was even able to increase the feed rate by about 15% and I was able to cut it my whole part much faster. I went ahead and machined the other features as well off camera just as it felt like it was getting a bit boring. Um, but those consisted of some um, pocket tool paths uh, coming in from the different faces. And then uh, to finish everything off, I did some parallel passes on each of the sides. For the hexagon shapes where the nuts would sit, I had to do a couple different passes, each pass a couple thou, just to really get it as tight as I possibly can. From there, I did the holes where the locating pins would be with the eighth inch end mill, which turned out to be a mistake later as it cuts on its side. So any kind of vibration would cause it to cut horizontally. So that was definitely not ideal. And I kind of wish I thought about that before using an end mill for it and not a drill. After that, all I needed to do was cut off the part. And so I set up an adaptive clearing and limited it to only a small sliver of space underneath the part so that it would clear it away with small passes versus a slotting method. And you can see here I used the paintbrush with the coconut oil to dab it on the side right before it cut. What happened here was it thought it cut through material when it didn't, and so it tried to wrap it through about a sixteenth of an inch of aluminum when it thought there was air and flung it out of the clamp. Thankfully there's no lasting damage here and as well as to loosen the clamp and get it back into place. After that I was left with about 65 thou of stock and was able to part it off with my hand. I would have cut it a bit closer, but I didn't want to run the risk of the part flying off and getting damaged by the running end mill. I then took a small file and deburred the edges to make sure that I wouldn't cut myself. I'm not super pleased with the quality of the underside of it, just as there's a lot of hills and bumps, and even after attempting to sand it, I still wasn't able to get it all that flat. The disc that this part is going to stand on, I got from somebody on Instagram who is making a tombstone project and had an extra one laying around. I needed to drill a few holes in the plate to mount my new clamp system to it, so this time I actually used a drill bit and drilled um, some eighth inch holes. After that, I threaded it with a hand tap and installed the new vise. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how the project turned out, and I may redo the main clamp piece 
to get the underside perfectly flat. But other than that, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more content like this.